The integral measure d4x is Lorentz invariant. The easiest way to see this is to consider a Lorentz transformation lambda, under which x goes to lambda times x. Under a coordinate transformation, the integration measure d4x picks up the Jacobian, the determinant of the transformation matrix. Since the determinant of lambda is plus 1, the integral measure stays invariant. But can we also observe this for every component? Under a Lorentz boost in x direction, the components of x mu transform like this. And for infinitesimal transformations, we get the following set of equations. So if we take d4x and boost it to dt prime, dx prime, dy prime, dz prime, we can use the expressions we just derived. After multiplying the brackets, we see that we get some strange dt squared and dx squared terms, as well as this term in front of dt dx will not be 1. So what's happening here? Why doesn't this work? The solution to this riddle is that this equation is actually wrong. The mathematically correct way to describe an n-dimensional volume element is to use the wedge product. So what is this wedge product? First off, a wedge product can only connect two forms. So what is a form? A p-form is a totally antisymmetric 0p tensor. So for instance, the one form A could be written as A mu dx mu, where the dx mu are a basis for covariant Lorentz tensors. A two-form B could be B mu nu times dx mu dy mu minus dy mu dx nu. You see, this is what we mean by antisymmetric. And the compact way to denote this antisymmetric product of dx and dy is the wedge product. The only thing we need to know about the wedge products in this video is that if we exchange two terms, we pick up a minus sign, since they are actually written in an antisymmetric way. So let's do this calculation again. If we use the wedge product and take care not to change the order of the infinitesimals, we get those four terms. Now, dx wedge dx must be zero, since this stands for dx dx minus dx dx. Same for dt wedge dt. And for the last term, we can exchange dt and dx by adding a minus sign. Now we get the factor gamma squared minus beta squared gamma squared, which fortunately simplifies to 1. Therefore, d4x is Lorentz invariant as promised. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.